Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the January 20, 2022 Planning Board meeting uh, called to order and uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, introduction to board members. We have Paula Matucci to my far left. We have Dave Andreessen to my left, the vice chair. We have Michael LaRue, the chair, and we have Jerry Graybill to my <laughs> right. We have Allison Herlihy, our the secretary, and we have Amber Fecto on the waiting room. Um, we have Jen McCabe, the code enforcement officer, and we have Tammy, our town planner. And I think that's it for members today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so right now we're going to open up the first public comment. This is just for anyone that has anything to say about something that presides with this, but not with any business that we are attending to today. Okay. Um, I think that's going to close the public comment. No one's coming in. Um, next going to be the approval of minutes for the January 6, 2022 meeting. I move that we approve the minutes as written. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? No, nope. uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Um, Allison? Let's we'll see if they got him. She's muted it. Can you hear us, Alice? Nope. She dropped. Off. Nope. She dropped. Okay, Amber. Hi. Okay. Technical difficulties. Okay, technical difficulties. Yeah, they're both mu muted still. Amber, can you hear us? Is that Allison showing or? Or Allison? Hey, the audio isn't playing through the Zoom. It's only I'm, I can hear you guys through YouTube with the live feed, but it's not playing on your. Yeah, they're both muted so. Yeah. Can you hear? Can they I hear can me? hear you, Jeremy. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Amber, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you now. I couldn't hear you. Oh, yay. All right. All right. Now, great. So roll call vote. How about Allison? Is, it, is Allison there too? Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Yep. Yes, we can. Hey, the audio isn't playing through the Zoom. It's only I'm, I can hear you. Guys. <laughs> it's all looped now. All right. So Amber, roll call. For the pro approval of minutes. Uh, it's going to be a delay. Okay, talk to me. All right, try that now. Amber, can you hear me? Bobby Joe's trying to get him in. Yeah. Just stand by with for a moment while we figure this out. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like Allison dropped out. Yeah. Um, I can't, I didn't hear it. Just keep talking. 
I hear a ringtone. Well, why don't you do the votes Roll here? Roll call. Yeah, Paul? Yes. Yes, Dave? Yes. I'm a yes. And Jerry? Yes. yes. Okay, so we have enough now, so we can just move on. Um, there's no public hearings, so now we're on to old business, conditional use, Annie Cannon, a.k.a. Revive Acupuncture and Wellness, 70 Worcester Road, tax map R32, Lot 17-4, R2 Zoning District. Uh, Mr. Chairman, th members of the board, thank you for having me again um, this evening. Evening, Thank you for giving me the chance to revise my application from the previous meeting. Um, tonight I am requesting approval from the board under a few conditions, which I will discuss momentarily. Um, I am hoping to be able to open for business on February 1st of this year. Um, I know that some of the projects that I have outlined in my application are not able to be completed at the present moment because of the ground being frozen. Um, so there are three main projects that will need to be completed in the spring. Those three projects are um, the construction of an ADA compliant ramp, um, the driveway and parking area, and a fence that will screen from 62 Worcester Road. Um, I am requesting that uh, I be given the timeline of June 30th of 2022 to have these projects completed by, um, in a perfect world, I plan to get all of them started and finished as soon as possible, but I wanted to give myself a little bit of wiggle room to account for scheduling of contractors, ground being wet, um, conditions that are outside of my control. So. I tried to provide a lot more detail in this application than in my application a couple weeks ago, so I hope it brings some clarity to um, you all on the board. So for the ramp, um, there's a new, my contractor drew up a new plan for the ramp. Um, previously we had it coming off of the back of the house, but the ground back there is pretty wet. Um, I do still plan to address that drainage issue, but the new plan for the ramp will have it coming off of the right side of the house which will avoid the need for putting any so structural foundation. Um, uh, it doesn't look like it. Hold on a second. Can, can you can hear? Can your microphones on? Yep. Amber, can you hear us? Nope. Doesn't look like they it. They cannot hear us. They still can't. No. No. All right. Sorry. No worries. Um, She's got help on the phone, so. <laughs> yeah, no audio on Zoom. No audio on <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> Um, so the new plan for the ramp will avoid the need to build in that area that is wet. Um, the new plan for the ramp will be 48 feet long to comply with ADA standards, um, 48 inches wide and 48 inches tall. And it'll be constructed out of wood. Um, so this is now between the garage and the and the home? Correct, right? yes. Okay. Just like off to the right of the home. So you right. see like the back okay. of the deck coming off the back of the deck and then coming down the right side right. of the house. Okay. Um, and uh, the ADA for small business requirements state that um, small business owners must make all reasonable efforts to accommodate any individual with Recording in progress. Um, and must remove all physical barriers that are readily achievable, which means easy to accomplish without much difficulty or expense. So I do plan to build the ramp. Um, it would cause difficulty right now being winter, and it would be expensive and financially um, hurt my business if I'm not able to open due to not having a ramp in place. Um, the driveway and parking area, I met with Fire Chief Plant um, and we discussed a, a width of 18 feet instead of 20 feet. He said that would be sufficient to accommodate um, his fire trucks. And that would allow us to widen the driveway in the front of the driveway off to the right side instead of the left side where the cemetery is. So it would avoid um, the issue with the cemetery that was brought up at the last meeting. Um, there will be a 28 foot turnaround space for the fire trucks. Um, and the driveway and parking lot air, uh, material will be gravel. There will be a parking area um, constructed. The new plan is off to the left 
side of the driveway um, instead of around back of the house, again, to avoid doing anything where the ground is wet. There is a slight dip in the land there and some water buildup. Um, Come in here. Sorry, we're trying to get Yes, the thumbs up now. Thumbs up. Okay. Um, but I will, um, I, I have a meeting with a landscaper actually on Monday of next week to discuss the drainage issue there. So that will be ad addressed um, before any construction begins on the driveway itself. Um, the plan for the parking area is eight spaces with a standard nine foot width, eight foot length. Um, and- Annie, it needs to be wider. It's 9.5 feet and 18 feet deep. According to the the right I sent you, if you look at the parking. Oh, I saw nine. I'm sorry, I saw nine feet. Okay, I'll double check it. Yeah, nine nine point five. Okay, nine nine point five is fine. If I can quickly amend that. <laughs> um, and um, prior to the parking spaces being complete, um, the immediate use of the space as of February first. Um, um, hopeful open date is just acupuncture. Um, the garage, I hope to convert into the yoga and fitness space down the road, but that is not a priority. Um, the priority is just getting the house up to code and able to open for acupuncture. I understand that I do need to complete everything with the garage within a year of planning board approval. Um, but since I will just be having acupuncture to begin, that's just a maximum of two cars an hour, and there's plenty of parking space as is without constructing a actual parking lot. Um, and the last project is the fence. Um, so the proposed fence is going to be about 50 feet in length and six feet tall, constructed out of wood. Um, bordering 62 Worcester Road. Um, that fence, as well as the driveway and parking area is mapped out on figure five, which is the Google Maps image. Um, so I'm prioritizing fencing in the area that does not have any existing tree coverage. Um, so that is it for the main projects that need to be completed. A couple quick Modifications that I made to the previous application just to bring a little bit more clarity to it was um, I made the note that the small group yoga and fitness, I met roughly around five to six people. Um, I noted that occasionally a roughly six times a year would be my estimate. Um, I may have large group, larger group workshops um, or special events. And I do want to stress that the primary goal is not to have a busy yoga studio. It's to be able to have <clears throat> occasional yoga and fitness classes. Um, I did modify the hours of operation. I just want to stress that this is maximum hours of operation, uh, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., Saturday and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, I don't plan to be working 9 to 11 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, I don't plan to have people in there those hours all the time. I just want to say that that is the maximum hours um, that it, the space would be used. And then I also included um, a personal use of this space. My husband and I live right next door, so we may um, utilize the shed for storage, garage, um, lawn, and garden as well for personal use. Um, I believe that is it. I hope I covered everything. Okay. Um, if there's anything you said that the fence is only 50 feet, correct? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, just it's, because it, I wanted to prioritize yep. the, the open area and it's okay. about 50 feet of the area that yep. has no existing coverage. Okay. Yeah. Cause I mean, there's trees, you can see that there's trees. Everywhere yes. Okay. Amy, can you see on the record what your um, estimated date of um, finishing your project will be? Can you just fill that date out there so it's on the record? Yes, June 30th of 2022 for the ramp, the driveway, and the fence. And is that okay with the code for ABA, what she's reading is something that she came into our office and we pointed her to. So yep. that is correct. Small businesses do have that okay. ability to do it as long as they submit a letter with an actual date on it. Which okay. Is done here. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I did another note about ADA. Um, I did contact the state fire marshal's office and I spoke with someone there 
um, who confirmed that based on the size and occupancy type of the location, I do not need a state permit. Okay. Great. Uh, one thing, uh, as of the last time we met, because we did have a public hearing and public comments, uh, you had you had left here uh, with the intention of having a meeting with the abutters. And has that happened? And is yeah. is yes, we did meet last weekend. Okay. Um, they wanted to know a timeline on the fence. Sure. I at the time was hesitant to give a timeline just because of the financial priority of the driveway and the ramp, um, but I have put a timeline in here. Again, I'm prioritizing the open area um, just in terms of cost effectiveness. Okay. okay. Uh, question for Jen, when we met on site that day, what about the ADA access inside the house for the bathroom? He's already done that, right? Your contract is already coming kind of yeah, doorways have yeah. been widened. Okay. Um, yeah. That was the only thing I didn't see from what we had talked about that day. Okay. So that's already been behind the scenes going on. My question is, what date did um, Chief Plant give you to widen the driveway? I know he gave you an extension. Did he give you a date? He did not give me a date. Okay. Now. I don't think, I don't know if your timeline date was. Okay. Um, I'll talk to Dennis about that tomorrow, but okay, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he didn't mention anything about that. He just mentioned that it would be okay to do 18 feet wide instead of 20. Feet. Yeah, can we just put on record that a fire truck in our town is 10 feet wide? So mm -hmm. you need they need the ability to get in. You need the ability to get out. Most cars are 8 feet wide. That's why he gave you the ability to uh, shrink it down to 18 feet. I just want people at home watching to realize why he lowered the standard for that. Okay. Because it still met their, their needs. Their needs. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, I mean, the turnaround would probably be one of the more important things to, to do mm -hmm. for the priorities. Yep. Um, Jerry, you have anything else? No? Dave? I do not. No? Oh, I'm good. Amy, do you have anything else? Nope. No? She's got everything that I had talked to her about. She called the fire marshal as I had requested, which is what I was hoping, but I can't answer for the fire marshal. But as long as she called him and it'll be in the notes it'll be in the findings of that okay so it'll all be on record all right uh, i do also have email confirmation from him if you'd like me to forward that go with that over and then i can put it in the file should anybody question it okay Perfect. amber or allison do you have any further comments questions no, no? i don't have anything okay thank you awesome. so now we're going to be looking to find this complete for approval. Oh, uh, approval. Yeah. Complete first because yeah. of the question she had at the public hearing. So yep. you want to find it complete. I'll make um, a motion to find the application complete. I'll second. Okay, Paul, second. Uh, further discussion? No further discussion. Roll call vote. We'll start with Allison. Yes. Amber? Yes. Paul? Yes. Dave? Yes. I'm a yes. Jerry? Yes. All right. You got all yeses. Okay. So now the application is complete. Thank you. Now we have to final approval. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion that we uh, have a vote on final approval, uh, which includes all the caveats that we put in here about uh, chief plant and uh, a date and that sort of thing. But uh, I move that we uh, that we approve this application. I second that. Okay, further discussion? Roll call vote, Allison? Yes. Amber? Yes. Paul? Yes. Dave? Yes. I'm a yes, Jerry? Yeah. All right, that's that. So with the caveats, I'll have the findings of fact for you at the next meeting. Okay. So it won't be done before, but you can still, once, yeah, you can, once Ken gives you the, yeah. the CO. Great. I will talk to Chief Plant tomorrow and I will get the date to you guys. I will also get the date to Annie right away. Okay. So that she knows. I don't know if he will allow it to go that long. Okay. So I need to talk to him. Okay. okay. Yep. Dave? Annie, when do you plan on opening up? So the hope is February 1st for Annie. 
Andy at the mic, please. <laughs> uh, the hope is February 1st for the house acupuncture portion. Um, and then within a year to get the garage up and running for yoga and fitness. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. All right, moving on. New business, zoning amendments. First one is disorderly building ordinance. We'll have our code enforcement officer, Jen, talk about it. You want me to read it? Or? Uh, well, I wasn't going to read it. I was just going to explain why we're changing. Okay. So um, we have town ordinances that aren't included in our land use ordinance. Most people in town don't really know that. So we do. Um, one of the ordinances we have is disorderly building ordinance. And what this means is if currently the police go to an apartment building or you know a multi-unit building um, more than three times in a 30-day period for disorderly conduct, um, parties, loud yelling, anything that doesn't require medical care or domestic disputes, because what we don't want is somebody not to call, right? So um, like tenant to tenant, yelling at each other, parties, hooting and hollering, you know, all hours of the night. Our ordinance right now says that they have to make three arrests before we can do anything about it and find the building owner. Um, that ordinance was written, you know, way back. It doesn't really, um, the fine is $100 right now. It doesn't really bode for today's, you know, $100 is a slap on the wrist for people. Um, most people, I should say. Um, so um, I paired with Captain Locke from the Borough Police Department, and we kind of tore it apart and rewrote it. So we thought, like, some of the most important parts. Mike, do you want me to just point out the most important yes, changes? Yes, please. Yep. Okay. So we are changing um, on here. Um, that the police only have to show up and hand out three warnings or three arrests. It doesn't matter. But if it's disorderly conduct, they only have to give out warnings three times before we can find the building owner. So we changed, we also added the state statue of disorderly conduct in here. I want you to see that on the first page, uh, the last bulletin. And then if you look on the second page and you look at the fine amounts, oh no, if you look on the second page and you look units per building, one through five is three visits. It was three, six through 10 uh, units per building is three visits. It was four, um, 11 plus units per building. We changed it to three and it used to be five. So what we didn't, we didn't uh, want, you know, somebody that has 12 units in a building, they shouldn't have, they shouldn't get to be visited five times before we can do something about it as a town. We're trying to get, you know, everybody to feel safe and comfortable where they live in these apartment buildings. So then if you go to the last page, because we changed this a lot. So it used to be, um, didn't matter what offense it was, it was a hundred dollars fine. The police would issue it, they would um, collect the money or they would take them to court, but it wasn't clear on what would really happen. So that verbiage in there has changed, Mike, just okay. to let you know. Yep. And then um, first offense, we put as $500 up from 100. Second offense wasn't existing then, we put it to 1,000. And third offense wasn't existing, but we have increased that to 2,500. Our goal is to just, again, quiet down the buildings a little bit, um, let the police kind of do their jobs and more like, crucial matters besides showing up to the same buildings over and over, which is happening. Yeah. Um, we pulled um, reports from one building in town and they had been visited uh, 45 times. Oh, wow. So, okay. So that's why we're changing it. Okay. Um, a lot of the verbiage is the same. The fine amounts have changed. How many times you can visit is changed. And then we went to bullet points and added a few in here. So basically unreasonably loud music, boisterous parties, um, Oh, sounds. we we have a we have a noise ordinance too, right? So yeah, that's, but they kind of intertwine. Right from ten o'clock like, after ten o'clock. This yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, loud, loud arguments or fights within the building or its vicinity. Again, excluding domestic violence or medical calls. Um, intoxicated on public ways. 
um, activating a device or exposing a substance. Activating a device is fireworks, so it intertwines with our fireworks ordinance too. Um, I just want to put that on the record too. Um, or exposing a substance that releases not, you know, noxious or offensive odors. Um, engaging in fighting without being licensed or privileged to do so, or any other similar activities. And then Title 17A is, again, the disorderly conduct from the state, which we had to put in there. So that's what we're trying to accomplish with this. Tammy's going to go ahead and mark it all up for you. She's going to line it out, read it, whatever okay. they do, um, and then represent it to you. But we would like it to get it to the select board as soon as possible. Okay. So. I have a quick question for Tammy more so, I think. Are we the ones that set the price for the fines? We just make the table. I thought the selectmen vote on, they make up the- You don't, you're making a recommendation to the okay. board of okay. selectmen. Okay, that's the only- Whether yeah. or not they agree with you? Right, they can change, they have the, okay. And they can change the fine amount of fine. Right, yeah. right. No, I was just making sure, because I didn't want to have to say like, yes, that's it. But they they, didn't they have, they, I want them to say it. No, yeah. no, no. Yes, no. I, I think that what you, yeah. say is, is that's is just right. a uh that's what we want that doesn't mean that that's what no it could be higher that's right yeah but it, i think uh, the third, third time it should be even it really higher lower, <laughs> no no i think i think the third offense should be higher yeah you know that's third, third offense so can i just say can we speak at this part like can we just say kind of how our, our thoughts about it yeah okay right. so i totally agree that the same building seems to get frequented. Um, my concern is like, how do we really monitor? I mean, people call the police on the building. So how are they gonna know ahead of time if it's a domestic dispute or something like that? Um, and also on the, the other hand, we wanna worry about over-policing in those areas when you're turning such a high profit on that. Um, Cause we don't want those buildings to now be kind of targets of over-policing. I can tell you our Burt Police Department will not be over-policing these buildings. They already get called out there anyways, and they're just going to keep a log of it. They're already keeping logs of it. We've already been kind of looking into this. Um, I can assure you that's not going to happen, but we do need something in place to protect our tenants that are here with small children in the buildings that are dealing with this on a regular basis. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we, or we need a safe people, home too. Yeah. All, everyone needs a safe home. Everyone needs to be safe and kids should be able to go outside and feel safe in the neighborhood. Adults mm -hmm. should be able to go outside and be safe in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to accomplish. I have a question uh, just on how this functions. So is a call an offense? It depends what they're there for. The police can go So the, the police will decide whether it's an offense or not yep. when they arrive. Mm -hmm. Okay. And but. the police are, the um, Berwick PD is going to issue the fine. And they have to also be the ones to prosecute if they don't collect their um, fine amount. They actually have to be the ones to take it to court. Code is not in it at all. I'm basically going to be helping them and keeping a log with them and helping them through the process. Great. Just going back to um, units per building. Yep. One to five, six to 10, and 11 plus. You talked about. Um, the, uh, you know, th 310 all the way, or ex excuse me, three all the way across. Can't we just make that just three? Just just eliminate the one to five, six to 10, and then 11 plus. Absolutely, we can. Let's just do that because yeah. that, that'll be okay. way easier. So we'll just um, say yeah. three. Okay. We'll just say, yeah, three. Yep. yep. You got it. That makes it. Yep. No question. Yep, yep sure. Right. Back. Question on the first page, Acti sure. activating a device, does that include shooting off firearms from your house? Yes. Okay. I mean, that I would think that would be if your house is that close to someone else's house. This is only for apartment buildings. If you were shooting <laughs> off guns yeah, in your okay. parking lot of your apartment building, yes. Yep. This is disorderly building. It only applies to multi-unit buildings. Oh, okay. Yep. Shooting off guns, yeah. You say, we did, what is there 500 feet, right? But if you're shoot, but that's that's one of the offenses, that's one part well, of it. Oh, yeah, like fireworks, yeah, okay, anything. yeah. And, and how it also says odorous stuff, so stink yeah. bombs or anything else that of that nature would, mm -hmm. would mm -hmm. also be considered, 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes so that happens, Tammy. Yes, I know. <laughs> our single family residents, what are our fees for single family right now? Do you know that? Single family doesn't exist in this ordinance. No, we just have the noise ordinances and you can light off fireworks. You can shoot guns. You can do within reason and the law. You can do whatever. Well, shooting gun, go back to the shooting guns. It is 500 feet. 300 feet. 300 feet. 300, 300 feet. feet that yep. you have to be from know, a residential house residential. or the road. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's a bird PE thing. Code doesn't yeah, understand yeah. that. Just let everybody at home know. <laughs> Don't call us for that. Call the PD. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Amber, do you have anything to add? Or... Um, not really. I'm just wondering if there should be something similar for private residences. Or has that not been an issue per se, like it has been? Well, I, I think with that, it falls under the, like, like I said, the noise ordinances. So after 10 o'clock at night, if your neighbors are partying, you call the cops and they take care of it type of thing. Um, okay, that makes sense. I'm just worried about the similar fines or else I worry that this could end up being a little like predatory in nature against, you know, renters versus owners. <laughs> I mean, it'd be it, it'd be a way for the owners to be able to weed out the the people that are having issues if they care, if they care. Yeah, mm -hmm. if uh, that's the whole <laughs> if too. Mm -hmm. OK, just my thought. Yeah. yeah. OK, so that, are we we just they're not voting on anything right now, are we? I don't think so. No, I think you guys just so we don't vote to move this. Okay. okay. We don't vote to move this to the select. Um, okay. You will at the next meeting when I give you the uh, codified copy. Okay. That you guys have made tonight. Okay. Great. Thanks, Tim. Yeah. So, Allison, I just want you to feel a little more comfortable in this and knowing that this is a ordinance that we've had in our town for a long time. We just are really changing the fine amounts and making sure it's cut and dry of what we would allow and what we wouldn't. So this isn't a new ordinance. Um, it's posted on our town website if you want to go take a look or if anybody would like to go take a look. Yeah. We're just trying to bring it into, you know, today's world a little bit and out of like 19, you know, 90s. Yeah, I totally hear you. It's just profiting from, you know, like police intervention, I find just can be a slippery slope, especially with such a small community. But I do understand there's a need for obviously like keeping disturbances as low as possible and keeping the peace and all that good stuff. I just wonder how the best way to do it is. I think our Berwick PD does a really nice job on showing up to calls and figuring out like, is this their first offense? Is it not? Are they, a, you know, habitual offenders? Are we here all the time? They do a really good job of that. Um, I'm not really worried that it's going to turn into anything that it's not because I'm going to be in some control of this as well. And I would never let that happen. So. While you're here. Yeah. While I'm here. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully I retire here, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, but I got, I got what you're saying. Yeah. Any other questions about it? Anything that you want changed before you guys see the final draft on the third you want to take a look at it and email me anything that you come up with mm -hmm. that'd be great sure cool is that it yeah thank Thanks. you all right so moving along next is the village overlay request I'll let tammy take over on that yes all righty Sure. This is a request that came in from when um, Nicole Fecto was chair of the planning board. Someone had taken an email to her wanting to take and request that they be able to put a Mo sub shop in. I don't know the people, don't know the location, but that's what's in their email here. If you start at the end of the email and read forward, you'll understand what she's trying to tell them that the, that will happen. 
So I got it from James. So I said, yep, I'm gonna bring it to the board because I think it's a smart idea. The village overlay allows a few more um, businesses to come in on the ground floors. Hence, this would be a good idea. It would be right out here on School Street, just on the other side of the new, the new lovely edge at Berwick. And what it would allow is for somebody, they have a multi-story home, they could put a Moe's sub shop on the ground level and live above it. You can't do that in a straight village section. I have also been contacted by two additional people that still haven't gotten me their letters that are also interested in doing this. One is also on School Street, and I believe they're in the same block. If I look at the picture and put it together in my mind, I believe they're in that same strip of blocks. So let me interrupt and tell you that this house in particular is directly across the street from a road that goes on School Street. That's how far up it is. Cool. Okay. It's right next to right next to that, that body shop or right, the old one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's on that side of the road. It's up. It's got a couple of snowmobiles out for sale right cool. now. Yeah. That's the, that's not R one yet, correct? No, that is not R one. Okay. okay. No, yeah. it's not. No. So that's what they're hoping to do. The other one has to do a little more with an apartment type complex with it, which the village overlay would allow, but without giving out names and going into more detail because I don't have the documentation and maybe they've changed their mind. There's that, there's one there and there's also one on the other side over here. And I said, worst case scenario, they both told no, but best case scenario is you've got to get me the paperwork before I can even bring it to the board. But this is one that was given to me in advance and it seems to be pretty complete. There's a couple of pieces that I would like to add to it, but I would like it to at least be considered to go to the new zone. They even included, um, Nicole even looked up, the, the there's a picture of a tax map in there and she's got the whole thing circled as to what would be added and everything. And she also went to the comp plan and I pulled the comp, two pages that she mentioned in the comp plan out, which would support what these folks are requesting. So if you did the whole block, they could keep it as it is, or if they if they decide to sell their home, they could somebody coming in could then do a conditional use with it. So it's nothing that's going to take and break the bank. It will help the tax base. It's something seriously to consider. But the two pages in here really help explain what would be allowed by including this area into the new zone. So we're or basically allowing mixed use in this right. area. Yep, as opposed to strictly, nope, can only be residential. Right. This way you can have a mixed use. The only thing I question is if there'll be enough parking space for them. But I question that with everything I look at, so. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> even, even if they get this, they still have to meet requirements. Correct. Right, so they're still gonna yep. have to come and yep. tell us what they're doing and how yep, they're doing The it. overlay allows for a little less square footage on the lot. Mm -hmm. So yes, they would still need to get the conditional use approved okay. and everything. So it's not like it's cut and dried. Here you go. You can do whatever you want. No, it's not like that. It's one of those where you can take in. And, and you said it would be for that entire block. Yeah. According to the map that Nicole sent us. Yeah. It's basically from Cumberland Farms all the way to Aroma Joe's or that body shop. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the right. Right. Wow. Yeah. She's got it. Yeah circled in there and the house that was being that wrote to her has the dark line around it that's the one that they were hoping okay. to be able to do it with so okay all righty good Any questions yep. not yet not yet <laughs> okay and envision berwick i see jeremy and is it elise yep um, from a vision for what? Yeah, to, Marie. Hi, Tammy. Marie. Yeah. Sorry, Marie. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> to take and explain the signs, or if you have any question on this, the changes to the signs, they were very nice and codified it for me. So I will let one of them take over and they can explain the sign changes that they would like to see. Hi, everybody. Um, I am uh, going to just sort of talk about 
generally where this came from and what we were thinking um, and set up kind of some of the research we did. And then maybe Marie can quickly run through some of the bullet points of what we um, what we changed or are hoping to change and, and uh, kind of took a pass at for you guys. Um, essentially, uh, this started with with Cyrus, Marie and myself talking about encouraging business. And one of the interesting things that we learned as we researched <clears throat> other towns and other other areas um, regulations is that it, as preceding a lot of their language in their in their regulations, <clears throat> they go out of their way to say, we want to encourage business. We want business here. We want to make things easier for businesses. And the reason to have regulations is not to prevent business, but to encourage business. And specifically, um, you know, a lot of what already exists, we think is great. Anything that that changes from there, we think would be grandfathered in. So if, for example, we've gone out of our way to talk about illuminated signs, uh, internally illuminated signs, anybody who has an internally illuminated sign now, or, or if this were to pass, would, would be grandfathered in. Stuff like Dairy Delight, you know, that's part of the town. Um, but really, in having intention behind this, we want to make sure, A, that small businesses and that businesses that that are um, in keeping with the the um, the the qualities of Berwick, the charm of Berwick that we think is endemic, um, we want to encourage that and not suddenly find you know a giant um, neon lit uh, you know something. I, I could name ten kind of businesses that would be jarring to see you know right on Route um, Four or on Diamond Hill Road or cranberry meadow so that's that's really where this comes from is um having intention behind that and also one of the things we noticed in going through the regulations such as they are is that there was definitely a distinction between kind of what you're we just talked about as the overlay district or or what what our density our downtown and then what's what's in the perimeter but we feel that if we don't start to think about the perimeter as places where um, businesses that that aren't in keeping with the Berwick that that we hope we will continue to grow into, um, th that's where they're going to land first, you know. And and so thinking about that now and um, having intention behind it seemed important. Um, I think. Did I miss anything, Marie? I don't think so. Cool. I don't think so. Do you guys have copies of of what we we put together with Tammy? Yes. Yeah. Good. Do you want uh, Marie to go through it? Do you have any questions? What's the best way? We This is the first time either of us are doing this. So tell us how we can best, um, you know, fill you guys in on, on what um, the subcommittee's uh, intentions are. I mean, this is pretty much it. You basically just gave us the overview of what you're looking for, right? Yep. Yeah. Like I said, the, the language, this is something that, that isn't in here, but it's something that I definitely would love to consider. I don't know where it goes, but it seemed to be like in the beginning of these documents, just specifically saying that, you know, a little bit the way the comp plan sets up an intention for the, the town, we are not trying to hyper-regulate signage to prevent businesses from moving here. We want to make sure businesses feel welcome in Berwick and so in, in being clear about what they can and can't do, we're preventing, you know, future kerfluffles. Yes, I love it. I would hate to see like golden arches in the middle of Berwick. That's not, <laughs> that's not the vibe we're going for here, so. The example that we always used is, is you know, um, the McDonald's in Freeport. It's not that everybody is hoping we have a McDonald's, but if we do, boy, wouldn't it be nice if it looked appropriate at, you know, and if, and if they spent to do that. Um, but I think we all hope for lots of businesses here. And, and I think generally the businesses that come here are the ones that so far fit well and, and get why they're here and, and what's, 
magical about Berwick. We, we hope that continues. And, and, you know, seemingly it's exactly where we're headed. It's just good to, you know, put, um, put regulations on the books now. Mm -hmm. And when we put in the language about, you know, just about um, businesses being grandfathered in that already have some of these um, signs, we oh, actually you, looked around. And oh. Usually when an ordinance passes, if a business is already up and running, they're already, they're okay. We yeah. can't back change things. Yes. Yes. So I was just, so that, um, I mean, at that point, we probably could take some of that part out because it's just like with any other stuff. Okay. I, I was just saying that when we went around Berwick to see, you know, that really are hardly any businesses that have signage that is different from what we've put in here, like hardly any internally illuminated, nothing moving, nothing, you know, blinking lights and stuff. So, so really right now, Berwick has this really nice charm to it that we hope to keep as, as businesses come in. Well, I could tell you about one business and their sign, but I won't get into that just yet. Uh, <laughs> there's one business right downtown with uh, with their sign and their lights. So, but yeah. Well, good to get something on the books now so that we don't end up being uh, Las Vegas East. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jen, do you have anything? Yeah, I do. So I don't like the wording in here that... Um, the signs can only be lit from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. I don't like that. Um, okay. Some of our businesses open before 7 a.m., especially in Route 4. I don't think okay. that really will work for our town. I think we need to have, like, either if it's going to be a timeline. I don't know. I don't know why we would have them shut off their lights. But like, a store, the storage companies, they all have their, light, you know, signs lit up. Maggie's um, drive through they have their signs lit up probably, and she probably opens before 7. I don't know for hours. Um, there's a few other businesses down on that at least corridor that's probably you know okay i think you might want to look at that okay yeah i kind of agree because uh with that uh you know people want the sign recognition but also um if they're meeting the other regulations like uh you know uh black sky regulation so yeah, you know they're shielded out. to the sky and they're shielded to the road so that there's not bright light coming out on the road. I really don't, and they meet the regulation. I think we're fine with- With the time. With the times, yeah. With expanding the times or having no times. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And we did include, um, except when the establishments are lawfully open to the public or work hours are regularly in effect. So that would include if, if a storage unit is accessible at that time. Um, but I definitely hear that that point too for businesses, you know, who want to be seen as someone's passing out in the night, you know, Maggie's or something that, um, something like that. I definitely don't want to be exclusive to businesses that will gain something from keeping their lights on. Just thinking of um, in right in town or, you know, even, even on route four, just driving and just seeing the, you know, so much, if, if lights are on 24 seven. And again, I'm, I'm not picturing small signs. I'm picturing, um, you know, something that is a little bit larger and may still be externally illuminated, but if it's externally illuminated for, you know, 24 hours a day, I don't know if there's a way to change the language to. Picture yourself driving down route four at night. Okay. So you're talking about grandfathering all of our businesses in. Jerry opens a new build business um, on the can't. North Brook end of Berwick. Okay. And he's not allowed to have his sign lit all night, but he has a storage center. But all the other storage centers, because they're grandfathered in, they get to run their lights all night long. So who do you think that people passing in the night, they're going to call first? They're not going to call Jerry for a new business. You know, right. he's on the other side of town and he has a coffee shop. And he's not allowed to light his sign. You're going to stop at the coffee shop that you know has a lit sign, like Maggie's or whoever, Roman Joe's, whatever. And Paul's going to be left out. I just think that if we put a time on it, we're being unfair to our new businesses that come to town. Mm -hmm. um, I really think we should look at that. I think maybe they should think about it. You guys should think about it and really consider like <clears throat> it being fair across the board for our businesses. We want business to come to Berwick. Yep. That's of course. My 
Yes, of course. Yeah, Can so, I just ask you a question, Jenna? Sure. <laughs> you keep saying Maggie's. I lived in Berwick for over 20 years. I don't even know where Maggie's <laughs> is. Well, it's so funny. I know. Um, it's the coffee shop that used to be Jitters. Oh, okay. They just gotcha. changed the name. Gotcha. Oh, it's called Maggie's now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're awesome. Fair enough. You should try you it out. You should try it Fair out. enough. Great. I will try it out tomorrow then. Yep. <laughs> they're awesome. I think I agree too, just to drop the time, just because it, because they meet the other ordinances, it just kind of makes sense to leave mm -hmm. it open. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hear that. Division Berwick wants to send some changes to me. Because this will be the first draft of it. Yep. You yep. Know, now that you've worked on it, if you can yeah. get it to me. Unfortunately, sooner than later, so we can take it to bring it back to the planning board for the next meeting on February 3rd. Sure. Are there any other um, concerns in, in this that anyone would like to see changed aside from the, the time restriction? The lights on? Yeah, I'm a little confused on the, uh, on the size of the signs um, permitted. Um, the language has, so I would have to pull it up in front of me, but I think that, that there are two different sign sizes for the, uh, yeah, one for the, the side of a building and then the ones on the side of the building. Right. So, right. you know, for example, if you did have a storage unit, you would be able to have a significantly larger sign if, you know, you were in the shoreland commercial industrial district. Okay. Anywhere in here, and I just read it over and I don't see anything about sandwich boards on Route 4 that have small wording on them. Mm, not that I'm aware of, but that would be a great thing to. Can we, yeah, can we add something about that? Like, I feel like it's a danger when people have to slow down too much to read a sign. I was just actually, it's funny, I was just asked this question yesterday about somebody putting a sandwich board on Route 4, and I told them no. But I realized reading this that I really can't tell them no. Because it doesn't have doesn't any verbiage it. about it. Yeah, yeah. Tammy and Jen, can we can we get together and kind of work with Marie to whip something up to add to this for that? Absolutely. Please do. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Good. Actually, next week would be a good time to do it. Monday or Wednesday morning. I'm sorry. Monday or Wednesday morning of next week. Uh, yeah, we can email you and set something up for for one of those mornings. Okay. It might be via Zoom. I may still be in quarantine. <laughs> We'll see. Okay. <laughs> After this week at the town hall, not a problem. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on, we're going to open the second public comment. All right. Seeing no one coming up and no one on Zoom, we're going to close the public comment. Now I'm going to open informational items. Anyone have any informational items? Yeah. Tammy, nothing? No? Okay. Next is the adjournment. I'd like to adjourn the January 20th, 2022 meeting. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Seven, 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 seven. Awesome. I, I, I second it.